So here's something that we expected to see. Windows three, well, close to Windows three, well, Win Windows version, Windows NT workstation 351, running at glorious uh, 1080p resolution. So, yeah, you might want to go if we go full screen with this in your monitor, and you'll see it's actually pretty cool. And if you look at right here, right is um, it's interesting because you can see that uh, it looks awkward, I guess, 1080 because you don't know you don't really have the um, the bars in the top, which is kind of strange. And like I always thought, Matt, I always thought there's like a font bar or something on the top of the right window, but I guess the right never had that in the old version of Windows. But anyways, that's right, which is interesting to see in this high resolution because you can tell it doesn't even go past certain points. You can tell. And um, so uh, this is running using the uh, Beza BIOS extension, so VBE uh, 2.0. It's also 3.0 as well too. Um, but what you what you're gonna want to do if you want to get these is work also is, is running through KVM here. These drivers will technically also work through VirtualBox, I believe, as well. And it should also work on native hardware too, because nat native hardware you actually have as a BIOS extension. So here you go. If you search uh, Google for VBENT, you're able to find this website here, which I will post into the description. It's uh, HTTPS bare windows dot zcm dot au slash VBEMP. VBMP kind of reminds me of an, another emulator, anyways. But yeah, so that's that. But when you get the driver, you want to also modify it if you want to have full 1080. Because you'll see here at the very top there, you'll notice that these are the ones that it comes with. But this line, these lines here, where you see the 1920 times 1080 times 8, these are the ones you're going to have to add. You're going to have to add this line here, which is the 1920 times 1080. And you'll have to add 8 and then all those things over there next to the commas. And then repeat that for each and every one. So you'll have to repeat it for the, both the 16-bit color as well. Make sure you have all those lines changed when you do a copy, when you do a basic copy and paste. So that way everything is set up correctly. And then down here at the very bottom, you'll also need to make sure you set up the descriptions as well too. So it's going to be this equals the description you're going to end up seeing. So you're going to have to copy and paste that all the time as well too. So anyway, so here's the uh, desktop thing you can see right here that it's running at 1920 times 1080, right? So pretty basic there. Um, uh, but yeah, let's look at some applications to kind of get an idea on how things look. So this is typical uh, 480 times, sorry, 640 times 480 resolution because that file manager always opens up like that. So if you look here at the drivers, this is the driver here you'll get. You'll get when you download the files. You'll see that in the zip file you'll have an NT, an NT uh, 3.5 directory which will have those. And also what you want to make sure is that from the from your NTCD, you're going to have to go to the i386 directory and you're going, to need to, you're going to need to use the expand program to expand something called framebuff.dl underscore into framebuff.dll. If you fail to do this after installing the driver, you'll when you want to reboot for the first time, it'll say framebuff.dll uh, is bad or missing. So make sure you use the expand exe here and expand the framebuff into winnt slash uh, system32 directory. If not, you're going to reboot and you're going to have to go to VGA safe mode just to be able to get that going. So just keep an eye on that. So make sure you do this as soon as you're the drivers installed because you might not have that on your on your machine directly. So um, this driver also works with NT4 and N2000, a bunch of other versions of uh, Windows as well. So it's pretty good as well. But you still have to make sure that framebuff.dll exists. And NT4 is driver installed, no problem. So NT4 has the framebuff there. Let's go th look at some applications here. So there's some applications we can look at here that are kind of interesting to see it at high resolutions. Like one of the more weirder ones I have to say is going to be Paintbrush. So Paintbrush. Has you'll see in a second here when I open when I open it up. Yeah, I, I I had some I had some problems with the recording the audio while I'm recording the video, so that's why there's kind of it's kind of off right now. So I do apologize for that. So yeah, that's why it's not really as as in sync as I'd like it to be. But yeah, so here is um paintbrush as you can see you can tell on the, on the left side everything's like not not scaled properly it looks kind of weird everything everything those are so large and everything else is so small but the application itself works just fine the mouse is a bit jittery because it's going through kvm and kvm you go is going through the spice protocol and there's some funkiness going on there it's not like a native sdl window or virtual box uh, graphics display so eh, it's going to be kind of jittery and funky but really i got used to it and i'm totally Fine with the jittery mouse. I'm not really doing anything precise in these in these uh, virtual machines. Nor really doing anything much at all besides toying around, I guess, and just checking it out. There's, no, there's really no reason to run this version at all. <laughs> so applications like card file look exactly the same, except you can open up so many of them at the same time if you wanted to. And then of course Notepad is extremely large, as you can see. So right, yeah, blank right window looks so weird because it doesn't look 
so I think write was definitely written with um, lower resolutions in mind. And I couldn't figure out how to get, because uh, in write, you're kind of stu it doesn't let you write past a certain point in the file, which is kind of a certain point in certain columns. So I looked at that to figure it out, but I couldn't figure out how to fix that issue. So, and now let's go to, let's see, what's the good thing about this um, 1080p is that you can open so many solitaire windows, which is kind of cool. So we can open up like you can play like three versions of or more if you really really wanted to at the same time. You can you can do that easily on a, a six forty by four eighty window through one, right? So here you can actually open up like tons of solitaire windows and enjoy solitaire at at hyper high resolution. So if that's your thing, um, but yeah, what else is here? What else do I make? What else do I present in this video? I think I'm just talking for a while right now that I kind of miss miss what I was talking about. So. I might just talk about other round. Oh yeah, I think at this point I was mentioning my channel. Actually, I think at this point why it's so quiet and why not click on anything. Uh, so here I'll uh, talk a little bit about channel updates. So I haven't been posting to my uh, Tech 406 channel for a very, very, very long time. Uh, since 2015, 2014, no, 2014, uh, 2014, I think it is when I made those uh, last videos. So, um, but yeah, I look forward to some uh, new content based more around KVM and some other stuff like that. Because I did the VirtualBox stuff; those are all right and that. So VirtualBox is good for like desktop purposes. But if you uh, if you're more you know, of, a, of a KVM zine type of uh, person, then definitely the videos I'm going to start I'm going to create in the next little while are going to be definitely up your alley and I want to make sure the audio is properly going at that point. I want to make sure that I don't have the world doing this audio voice or I kind of rush this one out a bit so it's not really not really uh, as good as the other one so just give it some time and uh, yeah the Valga has some good more content out uh, for these things. I keep I've been playing around with these for quite a bit now so I think I'm pretty confident in how to set them up and how to uh, how I can create some videos on getting getting it all installed so um, so yeah if you want to be able to see uh, some stuff with um, uh, some stuff with uh, KVM and things like that maybe some more virtual block stuff in the in the future as well uh, just subscribe and uh, you will definitely see so Yep. Um, hmm. I really don't know what I was talking about the entire time. This video is actually quite longer, as you can tell. Like, it's just I don't like doing voiceovers. Voiceovers really aren't pleasant. I like talking as I'm doing, but this 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 new computer. I bought a, a newer computer, but this computer is worse than my old one. I guess you could say. <laughs> At least the audio is the audio adapter. I don't know. There's some just funky stuff going on, and I have no idea what's going on half the time. There's some weird issues that I've been having. I've been having troubles installing certain things. Like. I don't know. There's something really weird going on with this machine that I can't really describe. I can't understand if it's a CPU issue or a bad batch. I don't know. But there's there's some like a lot of a six. If I try running like some some 16-bit programs, generally run fine. But if I go if I try doing 32-bit programs, like old school 32-bit, it struggles a lot. It like if it struggles with 32-bit programs that have to I guess do 16-bit 16-bit real mode calls, right? So it kind of craps out a lot on me on that point. I don't know what's going on. So I might make some might make some videos in the future that goes through that and kind of goes uh, what the weird part about it is that it also affects inside of VMs too, which I sus which is why I suspect there's something to do with this processor in regards to running that kind of code. Like there's some ops that are just broken on the on the Ryzen chip. I don't know. It's really weird because um, so for example, I have a I have a I have a uh, another virtual I have a virtual box image that has Windows 2000 in it, and then the Windows 2000 uh, image has Virtual PC 2004 in it, and then in, inside inside that virtual PC 2004, I installed um, I installed Windows 95 98, and even those are having the same problems that I'm experiencing on my host machine. So I don't even know how those even go through properly. So yeah, more research is definitely going to be at this point. But anyway, so subscribe and uh, yeah, I uh, hope to make some more content videos, namely content regarding uh, KVM and other stuff. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.